know that vitamins do not directly yield energy. However, many of them are required so that energy can be efficiently extracted from the energetic nutrients. This is the case for group B vitamins, which are necessary in a large number of metabolic pathways collectively known as energy metabolism, the extraction of energy from carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. In these metabolic reactions, B vitamins act as coenzymes, meaning they are necessary for enzymes to function properly. The B complex is made of eight different vitamins, B1 or thiamine, B2 or riboflavin, B3 or niacin, B5 or pantothenic acid, B6, pyridoxin, B8, biotin, B9, folate, and B12, cobalamin. Vitamins B1, B2, B3, B5, and B8 are directly involved in energy metabolism. The other three are still involved, but indirectly. B6 is necessary to interconvert amino acids and to synthesize proteins, while folate and B12 are fundamental for DNA synthesis and thus growth and division of intestinal cells that are needed to absorb nutrients in the first place. Another important target of many B vitamins is our nervous system, and their deficiency results in nerve damage and serious neurologic consequences. Most of the B vitamins are found in the same food sources, and so a lack of one B vitamin generally means a lack of B vitamins in general. A notable exception is vitamin B12, which is only found in animal foods. In this course, we are not going into details for each of the B vitamins. We'll just give a quick overview of the molecules that compose this group, and then we'll discuss them together. This is appropriate because, like we said, they do similar things and are mostly found in the same foods. The first vitamin to be identified was thiamine, or vitamin B1, which is necessary for growth, our nervous system, and, of course, energy metabolism. Its clinical deficiency results in a serious neurologic disease, which we already discussed in one of our first videos, beriberi. Although clinical deficiencies of B1 are nowadays very rare, and most often affect alcoholics, marginal deficiencies are much more common as a result of excessive carbohydrate intake. Indeed, sugar metabolism uses up a lot of thiamine, resulting in fatigue, learning and memory difficulties, and a general feeling of energy emptiness. Such symptoms are so aspecific that many times are not identified as vitamin B1 deficiency. A lot of people taking vitamin B1 supplements are amazed by the boost of energy that ensues. However, this effect is short-lived, as once the deficiency resolves, our body quickly adjusts. Vitamin B2, or riboflavin, is also necessary for growth and energy metabolism. We also need it for the health of our skin, liver, and eyes. B2 marginal deficiency is probably the most common among B vitamins, and it results in very typical deficiency symptoms, such as redness or cracks at the corners of the mouth and a purplish, smooth, hurting tongue. Both B1 and B2 have an RDA slightly above 1 mg. They have no known toxicity, so no upper level has been set. Niacin is also known as vitamin B3 or PP. PP stands for pellagra prevention, and indeed a clinical deficiency of niacin results in the skin and neurologic disease that we also already discussed in one of our first videos. Niacin is necessary for virtually all the reactions involved in energy metabolism as part of the coenzymes NAD and NADP that everyone who studied a little bit of biochemistry will surely remember. The RDA for niacin is set at 16 mg for men and 14 mg for women. At much higher doses, supplemental niacin is sometimes used as a drug to improve blood lipid profile, and in particular, to raise HDL cholesterol. Another thing to remember about niacin is that it is semi-essential, because we can make it from the essential amino acid tryptophan, but only with the help of vitamin B6 and if tryptophan is present in large excess. You need 60 mg of tryptophan to make one of niacin. Pantothenic acid, or vitamin B5, is also necessary for energy metabolism as part of another very important coenzyme, coenzyme A. It is also needed for steroid hormone production, immunity, and the health of our hair and our skin.
It is very common in food, so that deficiencies are rare. If pantothenic acid is deficient, then all B vitamins are likely to be deficient, as well as a number of other nutrients. Pyridoxin, or vitamin B6, is necessary for energy metabolism, but it is also involved in many other important functions, including DNA and RNA synthesis, red and white blood cells formation, and synthesis of antibodies and neurotransmitters, including serotonin, which improves our mood. Indeed, among the symptoms of marginal vitamin B6 deficiency, we find depression. A more serious deficiency would result in serious neurological consequences, especially convulsions due to impaired nerve transmission. The RDA for B6 is around 1.5 mg. At much higher supplemental doses, vitamin B6 has been shown to help some pregnant women reduce nausea. Biotin, also known as vitamin H or vitamin B8, is, guess what, necessary for energy metabolism, our nervous system and the health of our skin and hair. Some of it is also made by bacteria in our gut and subsequently absorbed. Regularly eating raw eggs can result in biotin deficiency because raw eggs contain avidin, a molecule that binds biotin and prevents it from being absorbed. Heat denatures avidin, so cooking eggs for just one minute is enough to get rid of it. Folate and vitamin B12 are somewhat special cases among the B group, as their primary function do not involve energy metabolism, but other very important areas, and they mostly work together. Vitamin B12 is also unique as regards its food sources. Folate, also known as vitamin B9 or vitamin M, is especially important for cell growth and reproduction, as it is necessary for DNA synthesis. If folate is deficient, the first to be affected are our most rapidly growing cells, our red and white blood cells, and the cells of our digestive tract. Thus, the first consequences of folate deficiencies are anemia, impaired immunity because of low white blood cells, and abnormal digestive functions. Folate deficiency anemia is called megaloblastic because red blood cells are bigger than normal. This is because they go through all the growing steps which normally precede cell divisions, but then they cannot divide because they can't duplicate their DNA. Folic acid deficiency is extremely dangerous during pregnancy as it dramatically increases the risk of severe birth defects, known as neural tube defects which affect the baby's spine and brain. The most dramatic of these defects is anencephaly, whereby the brain doesn't form at all and the baby dies soon after birth. Another is spina bifida, a serious malformation whereby the backbone surrounding the spine does not fully develop and the spinal cord or spinal fluid bulge through the back. Spina bifida causes serious neurologic and physical disabilities. The DRI recommended intake for folate is 400 micrograms. Women of childbearing age are also advised to take a daily supplement of 400 micrograms of folic acid on top of what they get from food. Since 1998, fortification of all enriched grain products with folic acid became mandatory in the US and Canada, and the prevalence of neural tube defects has been halved. There is, however, one big concern when taking folic acid supplements or fortifying foods with folic acid. Namely, folic acid masks the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. If undetected, a B12 deficiency can have devastating neurological consequences, including irreversible paralysis. It is for this reason that whoever takes folic acid supplements should also, just to be safe, take a vitamin B12 supplement as well. This is also a major concern with vegan diets, which are very rich in folate, but very poor in vitamin B12. All vegans should be aware of the risks of vitamin B12 deficiency and take the necessary steps to prevent it. Take a vitamin B12 supplement, or at the very least, monitor it regularly with blood tests. Vitamin B12 is also called cobalamin because it contains one atom of cobalt. It's the only water-soluble vitamin that can be stored efficiently in our body, primarily in our liver. 
Vitamin B12 works in team with folic acid in most of its functions, including red blood cells formation, so that vitamin B12 deficiency also results in megaloblastic anemia. On top of that, B12 by itself is also necessary to maintain the myelin sheath that surrounds and protects the nerves, and it is for this reason that its deficiency leads to severe and irreversible nerve damage. In order for vitamin B12 to be absorbed from foods, it requires a special protein made in our stomach, which is called intrinsic factor. This protein binds to B12 and allows for an efficient intestinal absorption. Some individuals do not produce the intrinsic factor and need regular shots of B12 by injection or nasal gels or supplements providing a hundred times the RDA since a small 1% will still be absorbed by passive diffusion without the intrinsic factor. Folate, vitamin B12 and vitamin B6 also play an important role in cardiovascular risk protection because of their involvement in homocysteine metabolism. Homocysteine is an intermediate product of the metabolic pathway that converts methionine into cysteine. It normally is either converted to cysteine with the help of vitamin B6 or reconverted back to methionine with the help of folate and vitamin B12. If these vitamins are deficient, however, homocysteine starts building up in our bloodstream and damages our arteries, markedly increasing cardiovascular risk. There are many other molecules that, although not strictly vitamins, are often considered part of the B complex in that they have similar biological functions and an adequate intake can certainly help our body. I name just a few of the most investigated. Paraaminobenzoic acid is involved in protein metabolism, blood cell formation, and skin protection from ultraviolet light damage. Choline and inositol are the two ingredients that our liver uses to make lecithin, the most abundant phospholipid whose functions we have already discussed when studying the lipids. Our body can make both choline and inositol, but often it doesn't make as much as it's needed, so a dietary intake is still recommended. Carnitine is needed for fat metabolism, thus supplements are marketed to promote weight loss or help athletes improve their performance. But the evidence supporting these uses is very limited. Finally, lipoic acid is another molecule involved in energy metabolism, although most of the research focus is now on its incredible antioxidant strength that could possibly prevent numerous chronic diseases.